Mummy went up to receive her dialysis. When she went in, told them that she didn't want the vaccine and hadn't signed the form. But whenever Mum came out and got into the car, she had told Daddy that um, she had got the vaccine. Daddy says to her, why? And she says, because the wean nurse um, that was treating me had said to me, if I don't get the vaccine, it'll, um, it'll harm me from getting my dialysis. So the Wednesday morning came and um, Daddy phoned me. He says, you make him down, I think your mummy's having a stroke. Her whole face, mouth was twisted and her tongue was in spasm. Her whole body was shaking. The doctor told her to go home, get into bed and take some paracetamol and hopefully in a few days it'll pass. And when they got mummy in for her dialysis that Monday morning, she couldn't receive her dialysis because um, her blood was clotting. Um, I had geared up uh, that Sunday, um, uh, full PPE gear, and the nurse had said to me, um, no, you can't come in to see your mum, so I asked her why. I said, well, I'm wearing more PPE gear here than you are, because she was just wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. I had the, the visor and all on, the apron and all, gloves and all, and <clears throat> she says, no, mo your mummy's not sick enough for you to visit her. We all left then, we had to go home. We ran up the stairs and I went in and the wee nurse was standing waiting on me and I says, I want my son to come in with me. She says, no, he's not allowed. I says, my, my son's granny's dying right now and I want him in with me. He wants to see his granny. When I went in, mummy was taking her last five breaths and he had just come in, you know, when mummy was passing. And he cried then thinking, did you know I was here? Did you know I was with her? Welcome again to another emergency podcast. Um, today we have a guest in the studio, um, Debbie Murphy. Welcome, Debbie, to the show. Thank you. Thank you for coming all this way from beautiful County Alma. Mm -hmm. um, today we're here to talk about the loss of your mother, uh, Teresa. If we could see a picture of your mother, mm -hmm. that's because Teresa is the subject of the show today. So. Um, yeah, thank you for coming. And today is about, so you lost your mother in February last year. Yeah. In not very pleasant circumstances. No. So what we're hopefully going to do today is to go through some of the personal side of what happened there. Mm -hmm. um, what happened to your mother in the hospital? Some of your personal experiences with your family and the whole hospital thing. Um, and then how you've come through that. Mm -hmm. So um, you're very welcome. Uh, just whenever you're ready, if you want to start off about how, you know, was she generally healthy? How did she become unhealthy? What happened? How did that lead into the whole hospital mm -hmm. episode, if, in your own words, if you want to explain mm -hmm. a bit about that? Mm -hmm. um, about a year and a half ago, mummy um, kept taking ill with um, urinary tract infractions, um, which led to um, septicemia. Um, now, she fought septicemia three times. Uh, she came out of it three times um, and then it got to the stage where mummy had to go on um, dialysis. Um, she was put on the dialysis and um, she was doing great. And when, when did the dialysis start? The dialysis started about was it September um, 2020. Okay. Um, she was doing great. She was a new woman. Um, she got a new lease of life. And she was able to come on holidays and that with us. Uh, we, her, um, her and daddy bought a camper um, and she was uh, at the beach with us up in Donegal most, most weekends. Mm -hmm. Once she knew the campers were going out, she was, she was happy. That was her away then? Yeah. yeah. Um, and as I say, she, just, she was loving life. And the dialysis, that all happened in the hospital or at home? Uh, the dialysis, uh, she was going up uh, twice a week to uh, Daisy Hill. And how long did that period of dialysis last? When you said she got a new lease of life yeah. from the UTI, the only tract infection, to feeling a lot better. How long was that, roughly? Uh, feeling a lot better. It was, it was just a few weeks. It was within, within a few weeks. Oh. She was doing great. Um, as I say, she was still on the dialysis. Um, sorry, at the start, she was on three times a week dialysis. Mm -hmm. um, and because she was doing really good, um, she got it reduced to two days a week. Good. Um, and so that was, she was on the mend. Yeah, she was on the mend. She was doing great. 
Um, so how did it go from that to being admitted to hospital? What happened in between? She's on the men, she's feeling much better. She's out in the camper van, she's loving life, she's going to Donegal. Oops, she's mm-hmm. now in hospital. What happened there? Yeah. Um, on the 25th of January, uh, mummy went up to receive her dialysis treatment that morning and she um, was asked to get the vaccine. She had a form there to fill out over the weekend um, for to get the vaccine, but mummy, uh, when she went in, told them that she didn't want the vaccine and hadn't signed the form. Um, but whenever mum came out and got into the car, she had told daddy that um, she had got the vaccine. Daddy says to her, why? And she says, because the wean nurse um, that was treating me had said to me, if I don't get the vaccine, it'll, um, it'll harm me from getting my dialysis. So she went ahead and she got the vaccine, uh, the visor vaccine. Um, that was on the 25th? The 25th of January, 2021. Okay. So obviously there's there's medical pressure there. Mm-hmm. You know, There's no real informed consent there. No. You mentioned about a form to fill in, that yeah. she didn't fill in the form. She didn't mention to your father that she was going to get it done. No. She just did it because she thought it was the right thing to do because the dialysis was working. Yeah. And why would she want to interrupt that? Mm-hmm. She was so, afraid of the dialysis being stopped. I think anybody, probably like your mother, would have done something similar. Yeah. But it's, in my mind, that's medical yeah. tyranny. That's medical pressure. That's yeah. not informed consent. So... Um, after the 25th when she took that particular injection what happened then? Um, she came out to the car um, she was heading home and um, she wasn't feeling well she was feeling very tired um, she had got very pale in the face when they came down the road they came to my house and I went out and I was talking to them in the car and I knew by looking at, the, at mummy that there was something wrong hmm. I had asked her I says what's wrong with you? And she says, I'm not feeling well. And I says, why? And she says, because I got the vaccine. And my heart just dropped. I didn't know what to think at that stage. Um, so she says that she was going to go home and go to bed. She felt not well and very tired. She did. She went home and she went to bed. And I went down that evening. She was still feeling very sick and tired. Um, so she stayed in bed uh, we tried to get her to eat tried to get her to drink something but she says her stomach wasn't she wasn't fit to do it um, then on the Tuesday when I went down she was still feeling the same um, but around 6pm on the Tuesday she started taking a shake right through her whole body but she didn't say it to any of us because she was afraid of us getting worried yeah. um, and she didn't I don't think she wanted to worry herself either uh, so the Wednesday morning came and um, Daddy phoned me. I was in the house and he phoned me and he says, you make him down, I think your mummy's having a stroke. So I got into the car and I went. And when I got down, mummy was sitting on the kitchen chair and she was crying. Um, her whole face, mouth was twisted and her tongue was in spasm. Her whole body was shaking. So at that stage... We thought we'd ring an, am- an ambulance, so I phoned the ambulance and said to the re- to the the lady on the phone that we thought she was having a stroke. Mm. Um, so the ambulance came maybe three quarters of an hour later, um, and at this stage we had got mummy into the living room under the couch, and she held my hand the whole time. She never let it go, and she says she told me she was scared, and she was still crying at this stage. Scared of going back into the hospital? She was, um, I think she was afraid of Dan because she felt that sick. Oh. So I held her hand the whole time and then the the paramedics came and they ruled out there and then. They'd done a few stuff with her and they ruled out there and then that it wasn't a stroke. Um, So they were asking her what she had been doing the last few days and stuff. So I had mentioned the vaccine, that she'd got the vaccine on the Monday. And uh, the paramedic says, no, he says, I don't think I don't think it would be the vaccine. 
So um, they said they were going to have to take mummy to hospital and get her checked over. Um, so she, they got her into the ambulance and that and uh, off she went. And we tried to phone that day to the NE uh, for um, a report and never got an answer on the phone. Uh, I tried mummy's phone, never got an answer. Um, so we didn't know what was going on. So at around 8 p.m. 8 that evening, mummy phoned me from her mobile. Um, she had said that she was sitting in the car door all day by herself on a trolley. Um, and she still had the shakes and everything. And she had only seen the doctor. And the wee doctor had said to her that it was a severe reaction to the vaccine. Um, that he uh, had got the first vaccine as well. Um, I, I, I gotta, I've got to ask you a couple of questions there because my mm-hmm. mind is just mm-hmm. in turmoil thinking. Number one, the paramedics who came out to the house said no, it's probably not related to the vaccine. Mm-hmm. These are par- properly trained medical yeah. paramedics. No, it's not related to the vaccine. Yeah. For whatever reason, they said that. And then when they get your mother into the hospital, she's left on a trolley. Yeah. And I'm guessing you weren't allowed in no. to be with her at all? No, we Did you ask to go, go in to say, yeah. I want to be with my mum? Yeah. Um, they said I wasn't allowed to go in the ambulance. Okay. That is a pattern yeah. that's emerging mm-hmm. of separation. Yeah, yeah. And that's not a good pattern. No. Um, and I could see in her face that she was terrified going by herself, as you would be. I think anybody would be. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, to make matters worse, being left on her own yeah. in the corridor mm-hmm. when she's feeling very, very poorly. Yeah. yeah. And this was a shake that she had that it wasn't just a wee shake. It was a full on, full like, on like fit sort mm-hmm. of thing. And she was left sitting there in that trolley all day until she could see a doctor. She had got a COVID test taken and she had to wait for them results uh, for a couple of hours for them to come back. And was that the PCR test? Or? Um, yes. It was. Yeah. So... She's in there, she's waited, she's waiting half a day on a trolley Mm -hmm. in the corridor. They've done a PCR test. Did it come back positive? Negative. Negative. Mm -hmm. And you said the doctor said that it was probably related to the vaccine? Yeah. Yeah. Can you remember what kind of a doctor it was? Um, I don't, you see, because we weren't, as I say, we weren't allowed in. in Um, It was just what mommy was referring back to us. Of All what right. the doctor had said. Okay. And what happened after that? That um, was on, you know, day one of admission back into the hospital, if you like. Mm-hmm. So what happened from then? Um, as I say, mummy phoned me um, to come and pick her up uh, because they were sent in her home. Um, and myself and my partner and my two kids went up in the car and she was sitting at the front doors and we had to get out and help her into the car because she wasn't, she was hardly fit to walk herself. Um, her body and everything still shaking. Her face was all twisted. Her tongue was still in spasm. And this is her being discharged? Yeah. The doctor told her to go home, get into bed and take some paracetamol and hopefully in a few days it'll pass. And can you remember, you said you picked up your mother and she was waiting, in a presumably in a trolley, a hospital trolley, waiting for you to come and pick her up? No, she was sitting on the actual uh, seat at the front doors of, of the hospital. On her own? On her own. Mm-hmm. Did they give you um, like a brown envelope to give to the GP? No. Nothing at all? No. No. Just basically you were left wondering what's happening? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's difficult to hear yeah. because it's like this is a catalogue of serious mm-hmm. emissions, serious things going wrong there. Yeah. So what happened that evening then when you when you took her home? Uh, we got mummy into the car um, and my daughter... Mummy had her head back on the headrest and it didn't look comfortable. So my daughter took her coat off. She had a big puffy coat on and she took her coat off and put it in behind her head. And she slept the whole way home. She was out for the count, but her body and everything was still shaking. Um, we got her home and she was going into the house and she says, please just put me to bed. So we took her up the stairs and we put her to bed. And as I say, Daddy, was Daddy being in the house and that there, he was just, he was constantly making food and trying to feed her and, you know, water and all the rest, but she wasn't able to do it. Um, and then, as I say, all the vomiting and diarrhea then started after that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then there's going to be a period of time between that happening and was the GP involved? Did you phone out of hours? No. 
What, no. what was the next contact with the establishment, if you like? Uh, that uh, Thursday, she was still in bed all day. She, she couldn't get out of bed. The Friday morning, she was to go for her dialysis again in, in uh, the hospital. And um, she wasn't fit to lift her head off the pillow. Um, so I phoned uh, the renal ward. And they had advised me just to let her stay where she is. Um, I told them how she was feeling. Um, and they says, leave it to Monday morning. And hopefully over the weekend, she'll she'll get a bit better. Um, but that didn't happen. It was just getting worse. She was just constant vomiting and diarrhea. There was no food at all. Um, and the Monday morning came. And I phoned them again to say that she wasn't fit to do it. Um, and they did, did they mention anything at all about home dialysis or not, don't worry about it, but we'll come out to her and do it? Nothing, no. nothing about that? No. Okay. No. Um, so I phoned them again on the Monday morning and they says, right, well, if your mum's not fit to get out of bed, we're going to have to get her here for her dialysis. Um, can you take her in the car? I says, mummy's not fit to get out of bed. I, I'm, how am I supposed to take her in the car? She can't get out of bed. See, that's why I was sick. asking you about the home dialysis because I know of at least one nurse I know who does home visits mm-hmm. and does the home dialysis stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering why they didn't give you that as an yeah. option. You know, yeah. trying to drag a, a, a poor, a sick woman out of yeah. her bed to bring her into hospital yeah. when you're saying to them, she's not well, mm-hmm. I can't get her out of bed. Yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing eventually that you did get her in somehow. Was I had an to ambulance phone or? an ambulance, yeah. I had to phone an ambulance uh, and they came and helped her out of bed helped her down the stairs and into the ambulance. Um, she went on up for her dialysis then in the ambulance. Um, and I was talking to her a wee while after that I had phoned her mobile. Um, like we were getting no reports from the hospital at all. I don't even think we got, well, maybe one phone call we got. Um, you remember who phoned you? Um, Dr. Hardy, sorry, consultant Hardy was our consultant. Um, and when they got mummy in for her dialysis that Monday morning, she couldn't receive her dialysis because um, her blood was clotting. Um, so they said they would have to leave it that day um, and try the treatment then on the Tuesday. So on the Tuesday then she was able to receive um, the dialysis on the Tuesday. But she didn't do the full, uh, the full course of it. She only done half the course. Just just between that and the 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 one where they said, you know, she's got her blood's clotting mm-hmm. and they couldn't do the dialysis. Mm-hmm. What kind of treatment did they offer her you know, to counter that? Can you remember? Um I think it was um there was a blood thinner. Is it heparin or something? No, there's another Warfarin? Name. Warfarin, yes. Tablets? I think she was on them. Yeah, they had give her them for the for to thin the blood out. But nobody mentioned because you said when when she first went in with all the tremors and the tongue was mm-hmm. going and everything like that. And they said and there was at least one doctor who said this is definitely vaccine related. Yeah. So she's back in again. Yeah. She's not very well. They've put her on the blood thinners. Nobody said anything about, you know, this is vaccine related or no. we need to report this. They didn't mention the yellow card system, nothing like that. No, nothing. nothing. And yet we can see in the notes, yellow card is clearly written down. Yeah. But they didn't tell you. Um, a few times in the notes it says reaction to vaccine. In the notes itself? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and that was, you said that was the Pfizer mm-hmm. vaccine. Yeah. Um, did you receive any indication of, um, sometimes when somebody gets a vaccination, they're given a card with a batch number. No. Information about that particular batch, nothing like that was given? No. There's nothing in the notes about it? No. There's nothing in the notes. Mummy didn't take anything out with her that morning. She had nothing with her. Okay. All right. Well, uh, where did it go from there then after after that episode? Um, she was kept in for a few days and she had got, um, I'm just not sure, but she got a CT scan done um, and she got an x-ray done in her chest. Uh, the, ax- the breathing problems? Yeah. Or right. The x-ray came back clear. Uh, the CT t- scan came back that... She had um, a bit of an infection in the bowel, but um, it wasn't serious enough at that time for them to treat it, they said. Um, so then mummy went on the Friday morning um, and got her dialysis um, and was sent home 
on the Friday. By ambulance or did you have to pick her up? Mm, Daddy picked her up. And how was she when when your dad picked her up? What, What kind of form was she in there? Exactly the same. No difference? No difference. No difference. And at this stage, we could see uh, the weight she was losing. And at that point, you mentioned the consultant, Mr. Hardy. Mm -hmm. Was he phoning you to keep you in the loop as to what was going on or any planned treatment? Or did you manage to get through to him at all? No, we just had him phone us um, the day before mummy died. Okay, so now we're we're on to the the second pickup from taking her home again. What was she like when you got her back? I got her back home. As I say, straight into bed. She wasn't fit to do anything. Uh, The shaking through her body was now annoying her um, and scaring her um, because she says her whole body was trembling inside. Mm -hmm. Um, So we just stayed with her and stuff and and lay in the bed beside her and talked to her as a family. Um, And then I had to phone the ambulance again because her blood pressure had dropped and her sugar levels. Um, I had the stuff at home for to check her blood pressure and her sugar levels and Mm -hmm. that. And they had all dropped and um, the ambulance had to come back out again. But at this stage, mummy was soaking my sweat. Um, her whole body was shaking. Um, she wasn't really responding to us properly. Um, so I knew there was something more, more going on. Um, and when the ambulance came, they checked over and stuff. And um, they put it down as um, a urinary tract Infection, sepsis. At this they stage. actually used the word sepsis this time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I sort of knew at this stage, um, because I had seen the symptoms before with mummy, um, that it was turning into to sepsis. Um, and this this time, when she was going into the back of the ambulance, we just looked at each other and thought, she's not coming back. She just looked so, so sick. Our neighbours and everything were out and they knew how sick she looked. Okay, so what happened that evening then? They've taken her back in and you're all looking at each other thinking, mm, it's not good. Um, then what happened? Um, took her back in. We were getting Zoom calls with her. Um, and as I say, all that week we could see um, on the, I went down to Daddy's house every night for for to do the Zoom call so that my brothers and and me and Daddy could we could all talk to her, um, and she was hardly fit to talk. Um, you could just see in her face that I have the photographs because I snapped um, every time we had the Zoom call. Um, you could see the weight was just dropping off her. Um, she was still very sick. She still wasn't eating. Um, and. It got to the stage that week where she cried to me on the phone and she says, Debbie, I'm now wearing a diaper. I can't get out of bed to go to the toilet. Now, when she was saying this to me, there were soft words and silent words because she could hardly talk. Um, and she just kept getting sicker and sicker. Constant. And then it was vomiting as well. She was vomiting up blood. She started vomiting up blood. I'm just thinking there, Debbie, that you said... Um when she first went in, it was COVID negative. Yeah. A negative PCR. Yeah. Did they give you any indication they didn't put her on a COVID ward? No. No indication of COVID related illness. No. And yet they still wouldn't let you in to see her. No. No. And there, there are, there, we're just following rules. It was policy. But yeah. Why couldn't you go in? Um, I had geared up uh, that Sunday, um, a full PPE gear that I had got off um, a friend who was um, a nurse and he um, told me to go on ahead. So I put it all on, um, walked into the hospital um, and I went to the ward and I was met by three or four nurses. I just can't remember if there was four. Um, and the nurse had said to me, um, no, you can't come in to see your mum. So I asked her why. I said, well, I'm wearing more PPE gear here than you are she was just wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. I had the, the visor and all on, the apron and all, gloves and all. And <clears throat> she says, no, mo- your mummy's not sick enough for you to visit her. And that just cut to the bone and I, I just... And, and that makes no sense to me. Mm-hmm. Your mummy's not sick enough yeah. to visit. Yeah. Well, then on a sliding scale, how sick does somebody need to be yeah. to go into hospital to yeah. visit a loved one? That yeah. makes no sense. So they all stood at the door, basically, that I couldn't get in. 
it was a double door, so the sort of blocked you. Blocked, blocked me that I wouldn't go past them. Okay, so obviously now your mother's very, very sick. Mm-hmm. You're very, very concerned. Mm-hmm. You got no news from the consultant. No. Then what? Um, as I say, I went to the car and I cried my eyes out. My partner and my kids were in the car waiting on me. Um, and then I got a phone call from mummy um, saying that the nurses had been down and told her that I was making a fuss trying to get in to see her, which I thought was horrible that they did that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, <clears throat> so I went on home then. Um, and as I say, any time we had to leave mummy clothes in, we had to leave them at the front door of the hospital. We weren't allowed into the hospital at all. Uh, we had to put her name on the front of the bag and what ward she was in so that they could come down, a steward or something could come down and pick them up and take them to the room. Um, and then they would take down the empties, but we still had to stand outside of the hospital. Um, but as I say, mummy just kept getting worse and worse. Um, she then phoned, <coughs> no, sorry, I phoned her, um, asked her how she was doing. I think it was the Wednesday, the, that was the Tuesday. Um, she says they had put the feeding tube in. I had fought from the start for them to put the feeding tube in for to give her some, you know, Sometimes. some energy and, yeah. you know. And um, she uh, got the feeding tube in that, that Tuesday, which I think was the 22nd. Um, she then started vomiting up a lot, and I mean a lot of blood that evening. Um so they had to take the feeding tube back out. Um, that's when the consultant rang me to say that mummy was passing a lot of blood and that they were going to have to take her down for the camera test to see what was going on in her stomach. Yeah. Um, so I says to him on the phone, that's OK, I says, but I says before she goes, I says, please let me in to see my mother. I want to see my mother. So he says, <clears throat> I'll go and speak to the nurses on the ward and see can I arrange that. And he came back to me then about half an hour later to say that I was allowed in. And I says, right, well, I want my dad in with me too and my two brothers. So he says, OK, but we all had to be kitted up and wait in the corridor and go in one by one. Um, so it was daddy's turn. He went in first and he was talking about a mummy. And then I went in. And mummy was lying in the bed, facing the wall. Um, the window was at the other side of the room. And she wasn't able to turn herself around. And she had such a beautiful view outside. She wasn't able to turn herself around because she was that second week. Um, and she took my hand and she says, Debbie, it must be, it must be bad that you're allowed in to see me. Because she knew nobody was allowed into the hospital. Um, and I, as I say, I just held her hand and the two of us cried our eyes out together. It was horrible. Yeah. <clears throat> so next, after the family visit, you allowed him one by one. Uh, did she make it through the night? What happened? Um, we all left then. We had to go home. <clears throat> and the consultant said that he would call us with news whenever... Um, they came back up into the ward. Um, so he phoned us and mummy was in um, another ward where a nurse looks after two patients at once uh, during the night and stuff, like an ICU ward sort of. Yeah. Um, and he says, your mum's comfortable, she's, she's a bit sore um, and she'll stay there the night to see to see how she gets on. Uh, but he had told me on the phone that when they went in, mummy had um, the, the whole lining of her stomach was bleeding. Um, she had um, a ruptured ulcer and her spleen was opened. So they had to do a small procedure um, to close the spleen. Um, if they didn't, she would bleed out. Um, so mum was then in that ward um, during the night and the next morning then at 11 o'clock we got a phone call from the consultant to say that mummy was they would have to make mummy comfortable and could we make her way to the hospital but before that he had said that mummy would be fine before the operation on that mummy would be fine they would get her you know sorted and all the rest she would be back out again on her feet 
and then we got that phone call. And that's within 24 hours? Yeah, yeah. Did you say to him, you know, what's changed? You know, yesterday you were saying everything's great, your mum's on, on the mend, she's going to be out, and the following day, mm -mm. I didn't say it because, to be honest, I was in pure shock. When, he, when we got that phone call, I couldn't believe it. I just stood there in Daddy's kitchen, the two of us standing there, and we just we couldn't believe what we were hearing. Couldn't believe it. So did you get straight up to the hospital then? Got straight up to the hospital. Um, and again, we were only allowed in one by one. Uh, when we went in, uh, Mummy was just lying there. She was in an awful pain. She was holding her stomach, and her stomach was very, very swollen. Um, and she was very, very agitated. Obviously, you would be if you were in pain. Um, uh, she could hardly talk. She, we were just holding her hand and playing her favourite songs and stuff. And even when the priest came in um, that evening, she said every prayer with him. Every prayer. She knew. She knew it was her time. Mm -hmm. She couldn't fight no more. She fought through everything. She fought through uh, septicemia three times before and it, at the last uh, time she had septicemia she was so ill but she fought through that she came back and she was flying after it um, and as I say we all just went in one by one uh, she had said to me at one stage um, I was sitting beside her and she says Debbie she says go home she says and look after your wee children she says I'm not going to die tonight and I says I wasn't going anywhere. We had taken up the camper into the car park so that we could be there if anything happened. Yeah, I remember you telling me. Yeah. Um, and as I say, we just went in one by one all that night and she, you could just see that she was getting worse and worse. Um, she then, my brother, my two brothers and daddy Left at about six o'clock that morning because Daddy had an awful sore head. He was just absolutely exhausted. We were in the hospital from three, four o'clock the day before, sitting with Mummy. Um, <clears throat> and Daddy didn't feel well at all. So um, they were going back down the road for an hour's sleep. And um, I stayed with Mummy for a wee while. And she had settled down a wee bit. I had said to the nurse, I'm just going out to the camper. I'm going to have a wee cup of tea and maybe a wee half hour snooze. If anything happens, ring me, I'll be straight up. So I give mummy your kiss and that. And I went down and I did it. I dozed off for an hour. Um, didn't get any phone call or anything. Um, I phoned in and asked how mummy was doing. And she says, I'm sorry. She says, your mummy's not here. And I says, what do you mean mummy's not here? She says, oh, your mummy's away across the ward for dialysis. And I says, but I says, we're sitting with mommy all night. Mommy's dying. I says, how can she be away for her dialysis? And she says, oh, sorry. She says, give me a wee minute. So I was put on hold. Everything went silent. And she came back on a few minutes later and she apologised to say that um, mommy was back on the ward and mommy had said, I don't want it. I'm not fit for it. So mommy was taken back. She wasn't given dialysis. And... Um, she says to me, she says, I need you up here right now. So as I say, we run up, me and my son. He was 15 years of age. He wasn't even allowed in to see her. He hadn't seen her or anything. Um, we run up the stairs and I went in and the wee nurse was standing waiting on me. And I says, I want my son to come in with me. She says, no, he's not allowed. I says, my, my son's granny's dying right now. And I want him in with me. He wants to see his granny before she goes. So it took them about, it took them forever to put his PPE gear on, his visor, his, his mask, his apron, his gloves. And when I went in, mommy was taking her last five breaths and he had just come in, you know, when mommy was passing. And he cried then thinking, did you know I was here? Did you know I was with her? Um, and it was horrendous. It was absolutely horrendous. And certainly not easy for you to uh, live again, you know, relive all that. Yeah. That's just yeah. 
awful it was awful you know hearing it on the phone you must have said that a few times mm -hmm. now and reliving that memory yeah um how has the family coped you know afterwards it has been horrible because mummy was the rock of the family um she kept us all together mm -hmm. you know um and it has been horrible mummy's not you know she's not there anymore you know when you call down to daddy's house she's not there it's it's horrible. It's 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 like a nightmare, you know. There's going to be, there will be people listening to this and watching this who uh, empathise with you and who mm -hmm. will be sending you lots and lots of love and prayers that mm -hmm. everything um, you gradually find some sort of peace throughout this. You know, for the family and for the wider family that you know you have to find some sort of peace yeah. throughout this. What is your hope? that you know if there's somebody out there who's going through this as well what, what would you say to them if they're going through it um speak out and um, for to try and help others to come forward or for um any other people not to get the vaccine do not get the vaccine okay well um what about from and we've obviously got all the hospital notes you've mm -hmm. got the whole background to it have you taken any have you made any complaints against the hospital have you taken any legal advice at all what is your what is your hopes and plans there i know you know that you have to separate the emotion from yeah. from the anger you know there's bound to be some sort of anger at the way your mother was treated yeah um what are you planning to do on that side of things we will we will take it further as i said i I sort of just wanted to get this year over me because I took very sick after mommy died. I wasn't well at all. Um, and the mental part of it has been horrendous. So um, I want justice for mommy. I want, I want people to know how mommy, how, how much she suffered, um, you know, going through her death. And I will, I will take it further. If I can get a solicitor to back me up, wow. I, will, I will go for it. If there's anything we can do to help, mm -hmm. you know, we are we're very close to Brentnell solicitors in Belfast. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that Michael Brentnell yeah. would be very interested in talking to you. Mm -hmm. um, I can put you in touch with him and you can get some counseling from him and some advice, yeah. some very good cutting edge advice what's going on at the minute. So um, all I can say is, you know, condolences. It's a horrendous time. Mm. Um, thank you very much for coming in. I know it's not been easy, Debbie. So. No. Um, I really appreciate you coming in and talking to us. Not easy. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you. And thanks and love to the family. And stay strong. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks. Watch and listen for free on YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can also follow us on Telegram and Facebook for more information.